What is annihilation? Well, annihilation can be defined as the complete obliteration of an object. But just to be clear, in physics, while it might be true, a particle and its antiparticle are obliterated, there's always a con uh, conservation of energy. And it looks something like this. An electron and a positron are attracted, annihilate, and they create two photons. But the mass of these photons are exactly equal to the mass of those two particles. Now, there's also an opposite of annihilation, a process called pair production. And this one's really strange because a photon can create two particles out of nothing. The electron and its antiparticle, called the positron, appear. But again, energy is always equal. And since energy is equal, there must be a process, right? There must be it's something that relates the photon to the mass of a particle. So how do they exchange this energy? to be able to create each other. And that's what we're going to explore. Now, I think the process can be explained with just these simple principles. One, photons are transverse waves. Two, particles are longitudinal standing waves. Uh, and to be more specific now, I've added a little icon there to the middle, which is the core of the particle called a wave center, where a particle might be formed from one or more wave centers. But that reflects a wave, and that combination of the wave that comes in and the wave that goes out is what creates standing waves. Third is that that particle core, called the wave center, can really only be stable at one of two uh, nodes in a standing wave. And there are two nodes, and they're separated at half wavelengths and a standing wave uh, only has two nodes per wavelength. Now that will lead to constructive or destructive wave interference because of the placement of those wave centers. All right, so these three processes. Now let's explain annihilation and pair production. First, annihilation. But before we do that, let's just explain again what uh, mass is. So, Particles are standing waves of energy, and you can see the amplitude measured there at the top. Standing waves to the particle's radius. After that, they become traveling waves. The standing waveform breaks down. And that's what we measure as a particle's mass. Now, let's assume these particles are attracted to each other. And then they vibrate. Their standing waves collapse because of destructive wave interference, and that vibration causes that transverse wave, which are known as photons. Now, the particle wave centers are still there. The particle, we call a particle of standing waves, has completely disappeared because of destructive waves. Because those waves are destructive, you can't form a standing wave, and we don't measure mass, nor do we measure charge. So they appear to be gone. But those particle cores are still there, roaming about the universe, maybe roaming around inside a neutron until the point where a photon comes along. Now this has to be a really high energy photon because it has to be enough to do uh, kinetic energy to separate these particles. And so it takes a gamma ray photon. Now amplitude is still zero until this happens. Gamma ray gives it enough kinetic energy and the two particles separate. And once the two particle cores separate, now, the waves that are reflecting, and they've been reflecting all along, are now able to form standing waves again. They've separated to the point where destructive wave interference um, does not cause those standing waves to collapse. And, once again, you see standing waves for both particles, and it appears as if two particles have been mysteriously created out of thin air. They weren't. They were still there. And that's it. That's a simple explanation for both annihilation and for pair production. Have a good day.